This, this is Saurabh, and, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The BG show, show with Aditya. In the midst of digital revolution, which gets us excited every time we talk about it, there is also the conversation around digital detox and gadget double speak. Let's first discuss why do individuals get addicted to something, whether it's narcotics, alcohol, or digital devices because it's the same story every time first we get addicted to something assume that product a lot and then after a while we realize we have consumed it a lot it has affected our lives and then we go into a spiral by going for rehabilitation this is quite perplexing in a way a ideal world individuals wouldn't need to go to the addiction or rehabilitation centers if they didn't get addicted to that in the first place but human beings by nature will always get addicted to something for example by default humans are addicted to salt and sugar and then when it gets too much we start crying a foul over it and then we say that we are afflicted with diabetes and hypertension and whatnot if in the first place we were not addicted to it we did not consume such consumables in large quantities we wouldn't need to talk about abstract things such as diabetes and hypertension and all the lifestyle diseases that we like to talk about now forget the real consumption artificial consumption also plays a big role there is that balance between digital revolution and how it plays a huge role in the progress of the world a nation and individual versus digital detox how it affects an individual and their relationships for example let's take the education sector students are forced to be at home they cannot go to schools despite schools reopening parents and educational departments all over the world are hesitant to bring students in because of the after effects if students come to school so what do students do they spend time on their digital devices students attend online classes of schools and pseudo tuition centers they watch videos they spend hours on their computers mobile devices world starts to feel good because this kind of learning is active learning two way learning compared to what we have called the one way learning in schools there is two way learning but there is always an extreme end to anything spend too much time on a device and it affects every part of your body your neck your back your eyes and then the discussion comes increased screen time affects our cognitive system our sleep patterns are thrown out of gear the addiction and rehabilitation centers are not the solution to or any other professional spending time away from their digital gadgets rehabilitation center is not the solution if you were smart enough to know how much time should an individual spend on their gadgets then they wouldn't need time to spend away from their gadgets at these centers we've all heard this term called balanced diet that is in terms of nutrition but this applies to even the use of your gadgets but then the situation is like this during festivals consume as much as sugar as you want don't worry about abstract things like your health and your weight that's human nature first we get carried away by something we consume a lot of something whether it's food or or artificial consumption we consume what are labeled as 
unhealthy foods or fast food a lot and then 100 years from now when our generations are afflicted with such lifestyle diseases we are all sad about it well such things can be stopped well your ancient generations may have consumed such consumables which are supposed to be not good for health and you are affected by it but can it be stopped yes don't consume such products too much don't get influenced by the festivals just because there are festivals it doesn't mean that it gives you the free it to consume sugar and salt and what not and then cry a few days later it's the same with any other day addiction center whether it's digital detox or it's any other detox why do you consume so much that you have to go for detox why do you get into that habit that i will consume it won't affect me because i'm sad and then when you finally come out of it you see that you have consumed too much and then there is the need to stop consuming it but then we don't live in an ideal or utopian world we are bound to make such mistakes despite the fact that we have seen other individuals make such mistakes we repeat them that is not erring that is pure folly and pure stupidity while this was a discussion about addiction of concrete things let's talk about addiction to abstract things like your gadgets the question is is consuming mobile data or information on your mobile phones and other electronic devices a way to show a country's progress no this is a fascistic way to show a country's progress but yet we are accepting it that if more and more citizens of a country have access to mobile phones not only just the mobile phone but the 3g 4g 5g 10g connection in which they consume videos they watch tv shows on their mobile phones or on other electronic devices it's a indication of economic supremacy economic progress well i don't exactly agree with this but let's go with it for now let me read you two contrasting ideas on the same thing on one hand there is digital revolution in order to remodel the sector into a cost effective agile customer centric environment it is imperative to bring in advanced digital innovation across diverse areas with the use of connected devices such as dumb smartphones tablets laptops witnessing a steady upswing consumers of telecom services are preparing to engage with service providers digital leading to a shift from physical stores towards digital engagement channels but let me give you another example why do we use our computers we use it for a specific purpose but if individuals are found on the computer or on your dumb smartphones just browsing then i see them as nothing more than vagabonds and when this digital transformation crosses a certain line what does it become the addiction centers and mental health experts are increasingly finding themselves counseling adolescents who not only forget to eat in the throes of surfing chatting gaming or binge watching but also suffer withdrawal symptoms as alcohol tobacco or drug addicts when denied access to their black mirror of choice exiled from their dopamine hit they start lashing out crying or cooking up excuses so on one hand there is conversation about digital transformation shifting from physical means of education and learning to 
digital means of education and learning where students are watching videos on such platforms there are advertisements coming in newspapers electronic and pseudo media about this and there is some kind of excitement but what happens when it crosses a certain line when there is no guidance to as to take a break don't be on your digital devices all the time but with students forced to be at home forced to endure hours and hours of pseudo classes of tuition centers as well as the classes in your schools they have to be on the phone this is a situation which is very difficult to balance so it's on the individuals who are professing and getting excited about digital revolution how they come up with ideas how they lure children into saying that stay on your digital devices all the time and then and there is a complete transformation when they say that too much of this leads to addiction and then there are withdrawal symptoms of course there are ways to counter this but in the contemporary times when we are at home when going out is divided into essential and non essential activity and what is non essential activity don't meet people unnecessarily and if we don't meet people whether it's essential or unessential then we are forced to take recluse in our digital devices when we are at home yes we can stir up a conversation with others but to stir up conversations there should be others around and it's a very delicate situation so who should guide these individuals first of all these individuals need to think for themselves they need to know that i have to take a break from my digital devices i need to engage in analog activities going by logic detox centers rehabilitation centers de addiction centers as well as digital revolution will have to go hand in hand it is up to the individual to decide when to take a break not to get addicted nobody else can guide you from outside your own cognitive power will help you take that into action it's like saying just because i have ice cream in my fridge it doesn't mean that i will finish the set ice cream in a day maybe i will take a week similarly if new videos of education or a tv show or a movie have been released it doesn't mean that you have to watch all the episodes in one go i have never understood binge watching binge watching isn't a thing to be proud of binge watching is something that will eventually lead to addiction and then when there is addiction there is rehabilitation center so why reach the point of rehabilitation center when you can nip the bud you can nip the problem so until this gadget double speak goes away we have to live side by side with digital revolution digital transformation and at the same time the addiction centers and the fear of screen time and our eyes neck and other parts of our body getting affected by spending too much time looking at staring at digital devices the only solution is when you are on your digital device don't be a vagabond if you have come to do some work complete your assignment or your homework and then take a complete break switch off your devices it isn't as easy as it sounds but you have to start somewhere yeah. reading session 1 kite runner khaled husaini chapter 2 sometimes up in those trees i talked hasan into firing walnuts with his slingshot at the neighbors one eyed german shepherd hasan never wanted to but if i asked really asked he wouldn't deny me hasan never denied me anything and he was deadly with his slingshot hasan's father ali used to catch us and get mad 
or as mad as someone as gentle as Ali could ever get. He would wag his finger and wave us down from the tree. He would take the mirror and tell us what his mother had told him that the devil shone mirrors too, shown them to distract Muslims during prayer and he laughs while he does it. He always added, scowling at his son. Yes, father, Hassan would mumble, looking down at his feet, but he never told on me. Never told that the mirror, like shooting walnuts at the neighbor's dog, was always my idea. The poplar trees lined the red brick driveway, which led to a pair of wrought iron gates. They in turn opened into an extension of the driveway into my father's estate. The house sat on the left side of the big path, the backyard at the end of it. Everyone agreed that my father, my Baba had built the most beautiful house in the Wazir Akbar Khan district, a new and affluent neighborhood in the northern part of Kabul. Some thought it was the prettiest house in all of Kabul. A broad entryway flanked by rose bushes led to the sprawling house of marble floors and wide windows. Intricate mosaic tiles, handpicked by Baba in his Fahan, covered the floors of the four bathrooms. Gold stitched tapestries, which Baba had bought in Calcutta, lined the walls. A crystal chandelier hung from the vaulted ceiling. Reading Session 2 Agatha Christie, Labors of Hercules, Chapter 2 Lady Hogan said, If you had been paying proper attention to your duties, nobody could have sneaked up and cut that lead. Miss Carnaby seemed inclined to burst into tears. Poirot said hastily, and what happened next? Well, of course, I looked everywhere and called, and I asked the park attendant if he had seen a man carrying a Pekinese dog, but he hadn't noticed anything of the kind, and I didn't know what to do. And I went on searching, but at last, of course, I had to come home. Miss Carnaby stopped dead. Poirot could imagine the scene that followed well enough. He asked, and then you received a letter? Lady Hogan took up the tale. By the first post the following morning, it said that if I wanted to see Shan Tung alive, I was to send 200 pounds in one pound notes in an unregistered packet to Captain Curtis, 38 Bloomsbury Road Square. It said that if the money were marked or the police informed, then, then Shan Tung's ears and tails would be cut off. Miss Carnaby began to sniff. So awful, she murmured, how people can be such fiends. Lady Hogan went on. It said that if I send the money at once, Tan Tong would be returned the same evening alive and well. But that if, if afterwards I went to the police, it would be Shan Tong who suffered for it. Miss Carnaby murmured tearfully. Oh dear, I am so afraid that even now, of course, Mr. Poirot isn't exactly the police. Lady Hogan said anxiously, So you see, Mr. Poirot, you will have to be very careful. Hercule Poirot was quick to allay her anxiety. But I, I am not of the police. My inquiries, they will be conducted very discreetly, very quietly. You can be assured, Lady Hogan, that Shan Tung will be perfectly safe. That I will guarantee.
reading session 3 iliad homer book 2 the bright eye goddess pelas lost no time down she flashed from the peaks of mount olympus quickly reached the ships and found odysseus first a mastermind like zeus still standing fast he had not laid a hand on his black benched hull such anguish racked his heart and fighting spirit now close beside him the bright eyed goddess stood and urged him on royal son of latris odysseus great tactician what is this the way all you are guys flying home to your fatherland tumbling into your own swept ships leaving priam and all the men of troy to a trophy to glory over helen of argos helen for whom so many argives lost their lives in troy far from native land no don't give up now range the achaean ranks with your winning words hold back each man you find don't let them haul their rolling ships to sea he knew the goddess's voice he went on the run flinging off his cape as eurybates picked it up the herald of ithaca always at his side coming face to face with a tree agamemnon he relieved him of his father's royal scepter its power can never die and grasping it tightly off his store to the ships of argives armed in bronze whenever odysseus met some man of rank a king he'd hold and hold him back with winning words my friend it's wrong to threaten you like a coward but you stand fast and you keep your men in check it's too soon to see agamemnon's purpose clearly now he's only testing us soon he bear down hard didn't we all hear this plan in secret council god forbid his anger destroy the army he commands the rage of kings is strong they are nursed by the gods their honor comes from zeus they are dear to zeus the god who rules the world Reading session four. P. G. Woodhouse, stiff upper lip, Jeeves. That was a ghastly experience, Bertie. He said, "Couldn't have been all pleasant." I agreed. My whole past life seemed to flash before me. That's odd. You weren't drowning. No, but the principles the same. I can tell you, I was thankful when Pinker made his. presence fell what a splendid chap he is one of the best that's what today's church needs more curates capable of handing off and letting fellows like spood have it where it does most good one feels so safe when he's around i put a point which seemed to have escaped his notice but he won't always be around he has infants bible classes and mothers meetings and all that sort of thing to occupy his time don't forget that spood do crush to earth will rise again his jaw sagged a bit i never thought of that if you take my advice you'll clear out and go underground for a while stiffy would lend you her car i believe you are right he said adding something about out of the mouths of babes and sucklings which i thought a bit offensive i leave this evening without saying goodbye of course without saying goodbye no don't go that way keep bearing to the left i want to go to the kitchen garden i told em i'd meet her there you told who emerald stoker Who did you think I met? She had to go to the kitchen garden and gather beans and things for tonight's dinner. 
and there, sure enough, she was with a large basin in her hands, busy about her domestic duties. Here's Bertie M. said Gussie, and she whisked around, spilling a bean or two. I was disturbed to see how every freckle on her face lit up as she looked at him, as if she were gazing on some lovely sight, which was far from being the case. In me, she didn't seem much interested. A brief hello, Bertie, appeared to cover it as far as I was concerned, her whole attention being earmarked for Gussie. She was staring at him as a mother might have stared at a loved child who had shown up at the home after a clash with one of the neighborhood children. Until then, I had been too agitated to notice how disheveled his encounter with Spood had left him, but I now saw that his general appearance was that of something that has been passed through her finger. What, what have you been doing to yourself? She ejaculated, if that's the word, you look like a devastated area. Inevitable in the serps, I said, he's been having a spot of unpleasantness with Spood. Is that the man you were telling me about, the human gorilla? That's the one. What happened? Spood tried to shake the stuffing out of him. You poor, precious lambkin, said Emerald, addressing Gussie. Not me. Gosh, I wish I had had him here for a minute. I teach him. And by what I have always thought an odd coincidence, her wish was granted. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.